Welcome back. You might recognize this summary page from the previous video where I talked about solving exponential equations using two primary methods. The first method being the one-to-one -one property, the second method being the inverse property. And if you recall from that video, if a problem is one-to-one, -one, that's the slickest, most efficient way to solve those. Um, this video is actually going to go through several examples utilizing that property. Unfortunately, not all problems are one-to-one. -one. So if that's the case, you'll need to use the inverse property. It takes a little bit longer, um, definitely doable, and I'll have an, an additional video going through some more examples using the inverse property. So again, for the purposes of this video, we're gonna focus on one-to-one -one property that said if you have an exponential, so the variable you're trying to solve for is stuck up in an exponent, if the bases match, you can pull those exponents down, set them equal to each other, and solve that algebraic expression to get your answer. So let's get started with some examples. I have five examples here that are fairly representative of the different types of problems that you might encounter when you're solving exponential equations that are indeed one-to-one. -one. Okay, this first problem is pretty straightforward. We can readily see right away that the bases match. That allows me very quickly to grab these exponents, just pull them down, and set them equal to each other. Um, once you do that, you want to isolate the x. It's already isolated, so we're actually done. So this is very simple, very straightforward. The second example, your eye may pick up that the bases match, but what you may notice is there doesn't appear to be an exponent there. What I want to call out is if there isn't an exponent, there is actually one there. It's a one. We normally just wouldn't write it, but perhaps filling it in might help you see um, how to proceed with the problem. So again, bases match. We're going to grab these expressions that are in those exponent positions and set them equal to each other. So we have x minus 5 equals 1. This is not already isolated for x, so we're going to need to do a little bit of algebra here to solve for x. You can do that fairly simply by adding 5 to both sides, and I will get x equals 6 as my solution. Third example. Again, the bases match, so fairly straightforward. This problem is basically begging at you to take these exponents, bring them down, set those expressions equal to each other. What you'll notice, this example, unlike the previous two, this is not a linear equation, it's actually a quadratic. So we wanna utilize our quadratic techniques. We may need to shake a little dust off um, to go remember how to solve those. So when you have a quadratic, you want to get everything set equal to zero. So since I have a positive x squared over here, I'm actually gonna subtract both of these terms over here set equal to zero. So if I subtract the x, look like that, and if I subtract the two, this is actually the algebraic equation I'm gonna go solve. Um, this is a quadratic again, it does factor. If you are not sure how to do that, you may need to go back and brush up on your factoring skills. Um, if I do factor this trinomial, I have a 2 and a 1. Because that's negative, they're going to be opposite in sign. The negative is going to go with the 2 and the plus with the 1. If you're not sure if this is factored properly, you could always foil it back together again and convince yourself that's what you get. The interesting thing about this problem, because it was a quadratic, that means I actually have two potential answers. Um, the zero product property allows me to take each one of these factors one at a time and set it equal to zero and then solve the subsequent algebra problem. So here I'm going to get x equals 2 and the second one I get x equals 1. So this problem actually has two answers. Now notice I've not been checking these answers. You can. You can take the solution that you get for x and plug it back in. Um, these we would do one at a time. You can stick this 2 back here and here and confirm that you get equivalent expressions. Um, we don't need to do that from a legality standpoint. Exponential equations, their domains are all real numbers. Um, some equations have one solution, some equations have more than one solution. If you choose to go back and plug in your answers, you're just checking to make sure that you haven't made any algebra errors. Okay, two more examples. Um, when you look at these two, initially they look like they may not be one-to-one. -one. Um, and you may want to go do them the long way. You may want to utilize the inverse property that I'll um, show more examples in the next video. 
but it is worth your time to look at an exponential and ask yourself, even though it doesn't look like it's one-to-one, -one, could I make it one-to-one? -one? And one way to think about that here in number four is, I have a two here. If I could rewrite 64 as two to a power, it would be in my best interest to do so because then I could make this problem one-to-one -one and it would be the fastest way to go about solving it. So if you're familiar with your powers of two, you might realize that 64 is actually two to the sixth. So if I rewrite this problem, it's actually two to the x minus two equals two to the sixth. So that simple recognition actually allowed me to rewrite this problem and now it is one to one and very straightforward to solve because now I can take those exponents, pull them out, set them equal to each other, and very quickly algebraically solve this by adding two to both sides. So I get x equals eight. Okay, so again, if you had not recognized this, you could use the inverse property instead, but that will take you longer. There's more algebra involved and consequently more opportunity to make a mistake. So it does benefit you to recognize things like this. I highly encourage you to be familiar with powers of two, powers of three, powers of five. Um, we see those types of things show up in these problems. Okay, let's move down to this last example. Um, again, this is not one to one. The four and the 32 do not match. And if you try to employ the method we did above, could I write 32 as four to a power? You realize that you can't. Um, there's not a way to do that. So you might jump off and say, well, let me go use the other method. But I would say not so fast. If you realize that maybe you can't multiply modify this to be four to a power, but could you change both of them to be some number to a power that matches? And if you look at these numbers both quickly, you realize they're actually both powers of two. So I'm going to rewrite that four as two squared, and I still have my x minus two up there. 32 is actually two to the fifth. So recognizing these were both powers of two allows me to write it like this, and now this is actually gonna be a one-to-one -one problem. And again, it's gonna be the fastest way to solve it. If you remember from your exponent rules, if you have um, a base to a power to a power, we're gonna multiply those powers together. So I'm gonna rewrite this like this first. Two to the two times x minus two, and that equals two to the fifth. Um, I can distribute this two through so that's actually two to the two x minus four equals two to the fifth. So now this looks one to one, same number, grab those exponents, pull them down, set them equal to each other, and go solve that algebra problem, which I can do if I add four to both sides, I will have two x equals nine, divide both sides by two, and we get x equals nine halves, which is again, a good illustration that sometimes we do get fractions as answers. Um, so again, remember on these exponential equations, our domain is all real numbers. We can get positive numbers, we can get negative numbers, we can get fractions. Um, you just never know what might show up. The key is that I can't stress enough is if a problem is one to one, it will be the most efficient way for you to solve it. Some of them will be obviously one to one, some of them may not, but the quicker you get at recognizing and utilizing your manipulation skills, um, the more efficiently you'll be able to solve these problems. So and unfortunately, not all problems are one to one, and we're not gonna be able to use this method, and that will be the focus of the next video. I'll be showing you some examples of how to utilize the inverse property to solve exponential equations. Again, I hope this was helpful.